This video is about the experience of migraine. Hello, my name is Craig Blackwell. I'm an ophthalmologist in Santa Cruz, California. In this video, we will look at how you experience migraine. For example, what you may see or feel and what are common triggers. In the second video, we discuss the medical aspects and give an overview of treatment strategies. And in the third video, we take a careful look at the mechanism of migraine. What is going on in your head to make all that happen? It is important to understand that this is for your information and does not replace consultation with your doctor. We are starting with this portrait of Thomas Jefferson because he was probably the most famous person with migraines. The following quote is from biographer Charles Ellis. In April of 1776, Jefferson was struck with a mysterious malady that left him incapacitated for more than a month. The ailment turned out to be a migraine headache, the first recorded occurrence of what proved to be a lifelong affliction that flared up whenever he felt unduly pressured. That is a story that many with migraine would identify with. While we know a lot more about it now, we are still a long way from a full understanding. Let's start off by recognizing that migraine is not defined by the headache. It is best to think of migraine as a group of various neurologic symptoms that occur in episodes and that all come from a common cause. There is usually a headache, but not always, and migraine appears to be inherited. Speaking of various neurologic symptoms, this is the full International Headache Society list of different types of migraines. There are too many to discuss them all, so we will limit this discussion to the three most common types. These three types are different ways of combining two things, headache and aura. Aura is a particular visual display or sensory defect that comes just before the headache, if there is one. The three types are, one, common migraine, which is the headache alone with no aura, classic migraine, which is aura followed by headache, and the aura alone, visual or otherwise, but with no following headache. The International Headache Society has different terms, but I will stick with these historic names because they are familiar and easy to remember. The features that identify a headache as being a migraine are, the headache is one-sided, usually throbbing, particularly with motion or straining. Usually it is moderate to severe in intensity. There is nausea, possibly vomiting, there is sensitivity to light and sound. Pain is made worse by physical activity. And the headache lasts from 4 to 72 hours. People with the headache usually prefer to be in a quiet, dark room and sleep. Often the headache is gone on waking. The aura is a sensory disturbance that occurs with the migraine episodes. It can involve vision, sensation, or movement. 30% of people with migraine have the aura. Here is the beginning of the typical visual display. On the left, there is a little missing area, which over a few minutes grows into a crescent of zigzag flashing lights, like on the right. Some describe it as like a kaleidoscope, others use the term scintillations. At full development, it may cover half of the field of vision. Within the crescent, there is an area of vision that goes missing. That is called a scotoma. Note that the visual display is present in both eyes, occupying the same half of vision. It evolves over 15 to 30 minutes, sometimes longer. Then the flickering lights gradually fade away and vision returns, like in the picture on the right. Other descriptions of visual symptoms include a sensation of watery movement, a blurred area, or a star-shaped figure. Rarely there can be a blackout of vision, but that must be distinguished from other worrisome causes like stroke. Surprisingly, some people take artistic inspiration from their aura pattern. This is one of at least two websites that collects people's artistic interpretation of their aura experiences. There is a gallery including even big name artists like Salvador Dali. If you are a migraine person, looking at other people's aura experiences is both interesting and disturbing. Some people have an aura that is not visual. Instead, it involves sensations of numbness and tingling that march down the arm or numbness of the hand or around the mouth. 
For some, there's a feeling of heaviness or weakness of a limb, or there may be difficulty speaking. To recap, the features of the aura are, it contains positive features such as the flickering light, and negative features such as the missing area, the scotoma. Visual symptoms occur on one half of vision affecting both eyes, while sensory symptoms occur only on one side. All the features are reversible, that is, they usually return to normal. Symptoms usually last from 5 to 60 minutes. Looking at the whole migraine process, it may have four stages. One is the prodrome. This is a set of odd feelings starting a day ahead of the actual migraine. There may be feelings of fatigue, difficulty concentrating, feelings of increased sensitivity or vague discomfort. These are not the same as the aura. The aura is the visual or sensory disturbance described above. As the aura resolves, the headache, if there is one, usually starts. Three, then the headache. And four, after the headache has resolved, there may still be vague feelings of dysfunction, like difficulty speaking or recognizing objects. In the mechanism video, we go into detail about what is going on in the brain with migraine. In this one, we will summarize briefly. The old theory of migraine was based on a vascular cause. Blood vessel constriction causing the aura and vessel dilation causing the pain. As accurate methods for measuring blood flow became available, the vascular mechanism was proven wrong. It was replaced by a neuronal cause, which works like this. There is still a trigger event. Then the aura is caused by a disturbance in electrical activity on the surface of the brain called cortical spreading depression. Cortical refers to the cortex, the outer layer of the brain, where the nerve cells are located. Because it is made of nerve cells, it is constantly abuzz with electrical activity. Cortical spreading depression is a disturbance of the normal electrical activity. It is like the passage of a thunderstorm. A wave of increased electrical activity starts out at a particular spot, usually in the visual cortex. It spreads gradually forward over the surface of the brain at about 2 to 3 millimeters per minute. After the wave passes, electrical activity in the area behind is significantly depressed. The speed and spread of the electrical excitation exactly matches the progression of the shimmering part of the visual aura. The following area of depressed activity is responsible for the missing area, the scotoma. The next big question is, where does the pain come from? Currently, there are two theories. The leading theory is that the cortical spreading depression causes inflammation in the meninges. That inflammation triggers pain impulses, which are sent along the trigeminal nerve, labeled TGN, through the brain stem and then to the pain-sensing parts of the brain. Several investigators suspect the brain stem is the origin of the migraine. Specifically, there are nerve centers here that, when activated, can send pain signals directly to the brain and send signals that cause the cortical spreading depression. But there are a number of details yet to be filled in here. There is a third cortical pathway that is also important. Migraine people have been found to have abnormal sensory processing of pain signals. Some researchers think abnormal pain perception may end up being a key factor in migraine pain. If you have migraines, you are not alone. Migraine is surprisingly common, affecting about 8% of men and over 25% of women. This graph shows the peak occurrence of migraine comes roughly between ages 30 and 50. It is an interesting feature that the severity of the headache usually decreases with age, sometimes going away entirely, leaving only the aura. Here is one survey of how long migraine episodes last, varying from minutes to hours. Here is a survey showing the most common triggers of migraine. Out of 1,200 people in this survey with migraines, 76% reported having some identifiable trigger event. Stress is the most common cause. Interestingly, for some, the migraine comes after relief of stress. Also very common are hormonal changes, particularly surrounding menstruation. Diet. 
About a quarter of people with migraine can identify a particular food or chemical which can reliably trigger an attack. Common examples are a food that contain a chemical called tyramine, which is an aged cheese, sour cream, chopped liver, sausage, and Chianti wine, and other things. Others include phenylalanine, MSG, nitrates, and aspartame. Here is the frequency of symptoms people report. Notice about a third have the aura. Which leads us to the next question. How do you distinguish various migraine symptoms from other worrisome things like a stroke or retinal detachment? Sometimes this is a difficult question to answer, even for your doctor. That is the subject of the next video covering the medical aspects of migraine. In the third video, we will discuss the mechanism of migraine, what is going on in your head to produce all those symptoms.